Hi everyone, welcome to this video where we'll be taking a look at z-scores. First, we'll see what exactly z-scores are and why they're necessary, then we'll work through how to calculate them, and we'll get an insight as to why z-scores are useful when comparing data. To really understand what z-scores are, we first need to establish why they're necessary. So let's say that Emily scored 52% in her maths exam. Initially, we might say that Emily didn't do too well in that exam. But is this a fair assumption to make? What if the exam was just a really hard one, and the average for Emily's cohort was 45%? Then Emily would have actually scored above the average and have potentially done pretty well. So as we can see here, often we can't use raw scores to make fair conclusions about data. This is where z-scores come into play. Essentially, we can take raw scores and standardize them into z-scores. A standardized score or z-score will show the number of standard deviations that a score lies from the mean of the data set. For example, if Emily's raw score of 52 transformed into a z-score of 2, then Emily's exam mark would be two standard deviations above the mean. So we could say that Emily did comparatively well in her exam. Z-scores give us a way of representing raw scores in terms of how many standard deviations they are away from the mean. Here's another important idea. If we start with a data set that is normally distributed and then get the Z-scores for every single point, we get a data set of Z-scores. These Z-scores will make up what is called the standard normal distribution. This is the same data set, but instead of raw values, we have Z-scores instead. The standard normal distribution has two important features. The mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Any value with a positive z-score is above the mean and any value with a negative z-score is below the mean. Here's where things get cool. Because z-scores measure distance from the mean in terms of standard deviations, we can easily apply the empirical rule. Saying that a value has a z-score of 1 is the same as saying that the value is one standard deviation above the mean. So 68% of all observations will have a z-score between negative 1 and 1, 95% of all observations will have a z-score between negative 2 and 2, and 99.7% of all observations will have a z-score between negative 3 and 3. Alright, now that we have all the theory out of the way, let's actually start calculating z-scores. The formula used to calculate z-scores is here. Now let's break this down. Here, x is the raw score which we're trying to standardize. x bar is the mean of the data set, and s is the standard deviation of the data set. So in order to calculate a z-score, we need to subtract the mean from the raw score and then divide all of this by the standard deviation. So we can see that the top of the fraction gives us distance from the mean, and then dividing by the standard deviation gives us this distance in terms of standard deviations. That's the whole idea that we've seen in the first part of this video. But what if we were given a z-score and asked to find what the actual value is? If we do a bit of rearranging, we can arrive at this formula. We can just chuck in the mean, z-score and standard deviation to find out what the actual value is in our data set. So let's try out a practice question to see how we might apply this. Emily scored 66% in her English exam, where the mean throughout the cohort was 68%, and the standard deviation was 4. She also scored 77% in her maths exam, where the mean throughout the cohort was 80%, and the standard deviation was 2. Did Emily perform better in English or maths, relative to her cohort? So as we know, it wouldn't be fair to just compare the raw marks of Emily's exam. What we have to do here is to find the standardized scores, or z-scores of her marks in each subject. Then we can compare these scores and arrive at some conclusion about Emily's relative performance. That means we'll be needing this formula. Let's calculate her z-score for English first. In English, Emily's score was 66, so x equals 66. The mean, x bar, was 68, and the standard deviation, s, was 4. Putting this information into the formula, we get the z-score to be negative 0.5. This means that Emily's mark was 0.5 standard deviations below the mean. Alright, let's do the same for her math score. Her score was 77, so x equals 77, the mean x-bar was 80, and the standard deviation s was 2. So we have the z-score which equals negative 1.5. 
In other words, Emily's math score was 1.5 standard deviations below the mean. Comparing the two z-scores, we can see that Emily's math score was further below the mean when expressed in terms of standard deviations, since it had a lower z-score. So we can say that she performed worse in maths relative to the cohort. And with that, we're done for this video. Let's wrap things up with a summary. In this video, we saw that we can standardize a raw value by calculating its z-score. A z-score shows the distance in standard deviations that a score lies from the mean. If our original data is normally distributed, the whole set of z-scores will form the standard normal distribution, which has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. We also know the formula used to calculate z-scores is z equals x minus x bar all divided by s, where x is the raw score, x bar is the mean, and s is the standard deviation. One handy application of z-scores is in making comparisons between different data sets, as we saw in our example. Thanks for watching everyone, see you soon.